Hello and welcome to another edition of Political Roundup on VOP TV. My name is Jerry Apelhart. On the Political Roundup, we'll discuss and analyze trading issues on in the political arena as well as other sectors that impact daily existence. We also spotlight major political conversations that have taken place during the day and we have seasoned and knowledgeable analysts who will be dissecting the topics for your understanding. Before we proceed, let's take an overview of issues across the policy which we will be discussing today. First on the agenda, the Northern Elders Forum again has expressed disappointment at the region's vote and the general elections of 2023 for President Bola Ahmed Tinobu. With the biggest number of votes from the region among the three front runners at the 2023 presidential race, Tinobu ran on the platform of the All Progressive Congress, APC. Abdulaziz Suleiman, the forum's spokesperson, stated in a Tuesday interview that going forward, the area would give unity and consensus first priority when choosing a candidate for the nation's highest post. Second on the agenda today, where Shergun Shoumi, a former Ogun State governorship candidate for the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has said that Ulu Shergun Basajo, Good Luck, Jonathan, and a few other party founding fathers stand by as the party suffers. Shoumi expressed his expectation that Obasajo and Jonathan would have intervened to end the party's protracted dispute before the general elections in 2023. Recall that certain House of Representative candidates running on the PDP platform recently demanded that Omar Damangum, the party's national standing chairman, steps down. Said on the agenda today where the Accord Party has demanded that the federal government step up efforts to stabilize commodity prices in the nation, arguing that commodity prices do not reflect the naira threatening relative to the U.S. dollar. In an interview with the press on Wednesday in Lagos, Mr. Dele Oladeji, the party's chairman for Lagos State, made the announcement. Mr. Dele Oladeji, the Lagos State chairman of the party, made this appeal in an interview on Wednesday, emphasizing the need for a reversal of the rising prices of consumer goods and food items. All of these and more we'll be discussing right after this break. Do stay with us. From the views on the streets, we go to bed empty hunger. To the blaring horns of a hustling city. The loudest voices of the common man got a medium to be heard. This particular administration, they were coming unprepared. It's not a bad thing to renovate the president's lord. Through top-notch programming, unbiased reportage of news, sports, business, entertainment, and cultural documentaries, Voice of the People, 90.3 FM, became a symbol for 21st century media. And now... A new baby is born. Voice of the People Television. VOP TV. Youthful. Full of vigor and penchant for excellence in the continent's media space. Exposing the wrongs. Applauding the rights. Dissecting the news without fear or favor. Through factual and accurate stories and contents. Corruption kills three things. A Mexican society. Representing the interests of the people and giving them a voice. Voice of the People TV is here to stay towards building a fair society. VOP TV, Voice of the People Television. Truly a voice for the people. All right, welcome back. Let's now go into the main conversation. First on the agenda, like we rightly said, we had the Northern Elders Forum has expressed disappointment at the region's vote in the general elections of 2023 
for President Bola Tinubu. For the biggest number of votes from the region among the three front runners in the 2023 presidential race, Tinubu ran on the platform of the All Progressive Congress APC. Abdulaziz Suleiman, the foreign spokesperson, stated in an, in an interview on Tuesday that going forward, the area will give unity and consensus first priority when choosing a candidate for the nation's highest post. In response to inquiries concerning the recent visit and donations made to communities in Northern State by Peter Obi, the Labour Party's presidential candidate for the 2023 general elections, Suleiman stated that the region would give preference to a candidate who is perceived as more inclusive, less divisive, and more in line with the interests of all regions of the nation. A number of Tinubu's administration's initiatives have drawn harsh criticism for being perceived as anti masses Tinubu's primary opponent in the previous election, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, claimed earlier in the week that the president's policies lacked a human face. In response to the increase in the energy tariff, the People's Democratic Party PDP presidential candidate made the statement. However, the president has consistently assured Nigerians that the war's days are over, saying his government has things under control. Now joining me to discuss these issues, I have here today Mr. Peter Anosike, a development economist, best-selling author and national analyst. Good evening. Great to have you on Political Yeah, Radio. thank you for having me. All right. Also joining us virtually is Dr. Joe Udiaja, an educationist and, of course, a national analyst also joining us all the way from the United States of America. Good evening. Great to have you on Police Grand. Good evening. How are you? Glad to be here. Yeah. Great to have you too. All right. Let's dive straight into uh, the action. We always start off with the Northern Elders Forum uh, regretting and saying that uh, they made the wrong choice of uh, showing their express uh, disappointment in uh, their choice of president bola Tinubu. what do you make of this dr joe well there are a number of groups and people in nigeria who are making um, similar statements or uh, conclusions that is not unusual however i do think that it is a little bit premature um you know, he, he touched a number of issues. It sounds like he's also talking about the selection process that Tinibu used in terms of how he picked perhaps predominantly people from the West, where he is from. And he talks about uh, the fact that the economy, without necessarily saying it, economy is no no doubt not doing well so these are important issues but i think that he may also be missing key factors for example the issue of the winner takes all is true in politics the winner takes all and that applies a lot in terms of who the winner selects to be in his or her cabinet who surrounds him or her Unfortunately, unfortunately, people look at who they are familiar with, which party they are from, who supported them financially, ideologically, etc., during their campaign or even during their life, who they feel comfortable with. And it all comes down to the winner takes all. This is not business. Business focuses on outcome. Politics is different. You must look at those in your party and so on. So now, I think we talked about this before. Nigerian constitution provides some guidelines. And I believe that Tinubu followed those guidelines. However, there's no doubt that his hiring has, can be questioned. But again, it comes down to who wins. When it comes to the issue of reaching out to other regions, making sure that other regions come in. I think that's great. I think that's a great call, not just for Tinibu administration, but should be for all of them. There must be a way. See, the important thing here is this. 
it doesn't really, at the end of the day, who you select is important. But what people want to see is how things are working. If things are going well, they may still complain, but they will say, okay, we are doing well. So as long as the president does things that affect the rest of the country fairly comparatively, because he can never be equal, comparatively, he will be given credit over time. But I do think that right now it is premature, but it's not a, a, a unheard of for groups to be saying, even within a month of being in office, groups will be saying, hey, you're not doing anything. Part of that is to make sure that you don't forget them. And if that's the case, I do hope that Tinubu administration, any other administration, would take such as something that they need to look at, make sure that they are doing things that will be viewed as being fair to all the groups in Nigeria. All right, and of course, uh, the Northern Elders Forum, they are a very, very vocal uh, group, and each time they are not pleased with activities of government, somehow they find a way uh, to make complaint. But taking a look at it, is this not medicine after death? And looking at the fact that we still have some years to go before his first term elapsed. And uh, some will say it's still not too early uh, to start complaining and regretting voting for President Bola Tinubu. Well, the, the not is that they are very, very justified in being angry with uh, Bola Tinubu. Their anger is, is justified because they made Tinubu president. Tinubu couldn't, did not get up to 2.5 million votes in the Horn of Southwest. And he got uh, over, five point, or over 5 million votes in the North. And in the overall, he got about 8 million votes. Understand? So it is the, 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 the North that made him president. But he is now constituting every, every department, every sector with people from the Southwest. So the, their, their anger is, is justified. We made this man president, but he has abandoned us. And, uh, but on the other hand, he served them right. Uh, from this uh, press statement, I see that uh, there's a saying that w when a chicken wakes up, it becomes an ego. So they are now trying to wake up. In the past, people used to say that Igbos don't know how to vote, that we vote one way, and so on and so forth. But I want to say that Igbos vote only for the best candidates. We don't vote uh, Nekon Poops. We don't vote uh, incompetent people. In 1999, Buhari contested, I mean, uh, in 1999, Buhari contested against uh, um, 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 Ondu, Ondu Fandaye. He both voted for, for Obasanjo. That's Buhari contested against uh, Ondu Fandaye. No, Obasanjo contested against uh, Ondu under year. Because that time, because of the death of Abionda, it was agreed that the Southwest should produce the, the, the president. So the two presidential candidates then came from the Southwest, Onufandaye and Obasanjo. Ibo speak to Obasanjo. In 2003, Buhari came with a uh, with a uh, with a uh, um, uh, with a uh, Okadibo. Yeah. As a, vice president, yeah. as a vice president, as a vice president, you both know that uh, Buhari is, is inco grossly incompetent. Even though that their son was running as a vice president to Buhari, they abandoned the Buhari and voted for Basanjo. 2007, Buhari and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, Yaradwa contested. And the Buhari again picked uh, Umezuoke, an Igbo man, as a vice. Igbos abandoned the um, 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 uh, Buhari and voted uh, for Yaradoa. 
understand? 2000, 2011, Buhari contested again with, with uh, Jonathan. He both abandoned the Buhari and voted for Jonathan. 2015, he both abandoned the Buhari and voted uh, uh, um, Jonathan again. 2019, he both abandoned Buhari and voted for Article B. So we don't vote incompetent people. Uh, understand me? Okay. So it serves the, the North right for what they are getting at the moment. So they should wake up and begin to vote people based on their skills and competencies. Instead of using uh, religion and ethnicity as a yardstick. But let's not forget that uh, President Bola Tinubu is from the Southwest. He's not from the North. They run a Muslim Muslim ticket, mind you. All right, you're saying they're voting on based on religious lines? Religious and ethnic, uh, understand. All right, talking about Shetima being his vice. Sure, uh, and they're Muslim too. All right, uh, taking a look at the way things have swung and uh, the Northern Elders Forum, let's not also mind the fact that, let's also mind the fact that they've been also big critics, whether it be in the North being the leader or not. Of course, when Buhari was president, they also made a lot of criticisms about Buhari when he was the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But taking a look at this, it looks like everybody's already looking ahead of the 2027 elections and in a hurry for that election to come into play. But taking a look at where things are going, some have even said that with the way the policies of the government are going, they are beginning to lose the interest and the popularity they had prior to the 2023 election. But now, taking a look at the way the Northern Elders Forum has come, Dr. Joe Deaja, can we now say that it looks like the popularity contest is going to be more and more difficult for the tenable led government to win when the 2027 election comes into play, uh, taking a look at the economic hardship that Nigerians are going through? I think if uh, Tinubu administration is focusing on a uh, popularity contest, they will lose. Um, I do not really see popularity contest with regards to last election. I think that there was popularity contest, but that didn't really win the election. I think what won the election was fact, uh, were factors that include having a system that was there. Uh, uh, having some, uh, someone that is a savvy politician and knew exactly which areas to go to, and so on. So, uh, and of course, the issue of having a, um, a APC party that was coming as the lead party in terms of being in administration and has some advantages. I do not see popularity as being, as being the it. In fact, if you were, Tinubu might not have won. So if Tinubu runs some popularity, or if he looks at popularity, he may not win. I think what he should do, or any other party actually should do, is look at what is it that the people are talking about, complain about, and looking at things they are doing to see, in the case of Tinubu, a year from now, it will be important for his administration to say, aha, look at A, B, C, D things that are looking better now. Looking at those things now, they look very gloomy, but that is understandable. Rarely, rarely will administration do well in the first year. It happens when the administration took over from administration doing well, which is what happens a lot here with Democrats and Republicans. Usually Democrats will leave the government doing better than Republicans. And Republicans will build on that, but what happens within two or three years, things starts to fall apart. So Nigeria is unique. Tinubu inherited a very tough situation. No other, I doubt that anybody else would have brought this magic that Nigerians are expecting so that within a year, things will be good. 
All the economic measures, all the analysis in the world show that such would be almost impossible. What would then happen is in the next six months, people will be saying, okay, we understand that things were bad. And you told us you are doing ABCD. How are they coming? If Tinubu administration focuses on those things, well, things will be better. If on the other hand, he goes into popularity, he will lose because I don't think that APC will do well in the popularity contest. And actually, I don't think that Tinubu will do well. But I do think that the administration will do well if things they are doing now pan out. And there is every indication that many of them will pan out, but not so soon, unfortunately. All right. Uh, talking about uh, the policies of the President Bola Tinubu administration, we've had lots of promises that things, uh, the, the sufferings and the hard times are over. But obviously on the streets of, of, of Nigeria, things are not seen uh, the way they say things are over. One, uh, for instance, the prices of goods keep soaring and not going down. But we hear the dollar has gone down to about 1,200 or 1,300. And uh, uh, taking a look at the Northern Elders Forum concern, can we now say that going into the next election, the Northern Elders Forum's comments should be taken very seriously going into the next election? Well, one... <clears throat> When some people say that uh, what Tinubu is doing, for me, Tinubu is not doing anything. What we have in Nigeria is reverse Robin Hood, robbing the poor and giving to the rich. Tinubu, Tinubu is running an, a government of the elites, by the elites and for the elites. And uh, if this thing continues uh, till 2027, I don't see him being uh, re-elected. But one problem with Nigeria is that we have very short memories. Nigerians hardly, hardly remember yesterday. So maybe at the tail end of 2026, Tinubu might uh, just uh, um, juggle a few things up, and people will, will forget what the sovereign, the, the suffering that they went through in 2024, 2025, and so on and so forth. That's why, basically, I don't uh, um, 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 uh, empathize with uh, most of them. Understand? So, for Tinubu is not doing anything at the moment. All right. Taking a look at the comments of the Northern Elders Forum, they've stated that the region would give preference to a candidate who is perceived as more inclusive less defensive and more in line with the interests of all regions of the nation. Is, are they trying to indict or say that the current administration of Bola Ametunubu is not inclusive and is not in the interest of all the regions? When Tunubu came on board, he said that he is not only going to run a government of national unity, that he's going to run a government of national competency. We are those competent people in his uh, administration. But we can see what Cardoso is doing, the CBN governor. Cardoso is immature. Well, his policies look like they've been all about... Because uh, the Naira is being uh, manipulated. Naira is being... Man what you are seeing today is not the real value of the Naira. Assuming it is the real value of Naira, prices of commodities will have been going down in the market. When a currency becomes um, stronger, price it, in, in, inflation comes down. Prices of commodities come down. But what are you saying? That shows that what we are seeing now is a manipulation. It is an artificial value of the Naira that we are seeing. Not the real value. Not the real value. That's why things are not going down in the market. All right, so let's go over to Dr. Joe Diaja before we move to the next on the agenda. Um, we've talked about uh, the you've talked about the positivity of what the government is doing under Bola Metunubu. But let's not forget, talking about the refinery, he made a promise that the refinery was going to start very soon. March has passed, December has gone. And uh, now we are in the month of April 2024. 
none of the refinery has made any turn around. And of course, uh, the Buhari government before it left, uh, there was a launching of the Dangote refinery. But we hear that the refinery has started making sales, but still yet. Well, it's still about... No, it's selling diesel. It's not diesel. a refinery fuel. Yeah, no, yeah, okay, let's say diesel, but mm. still yet. Diesel and so on and so forth, they are still on the same prices. What was the effect of all the promises on the people when we are not seeing action on the ground, Dr. Joe Diadjo? Well, again, first of all, I do want to say that Tinubu should not neglect or ignore the concerns of the Northern uh, Forum. Okay, that's an important group, just like every other group. The fact that they voice the opinion is something that the administration to, should take seriously and look deep into some of the concerns that they raised. Um, now, the refineries are not working. Things are still high. You know, economics, and I, I'm not expert in economics, Mr. Anosike is, but you know, Two key factors control infection, demand and supply. So, and I know we have another topic where we can talk more about that, but if you look at the refining, why is it not working? Well, I don't know the details, but my understanding was that the refinery at Potaco started working. The one at uh, Wale, uh, Sapele area, I believe started working and then something happened. There are going to be some hiccups, okay? There are going to be some hiccups. The important thing is to make sure that these hiccups are investigated and on a timely basis, find out what happened. And if there are some people undermining it, they should be brought to justice. If the issue has to do with some instrumental issues, they deal with them. So. It, what people will hold you responsible is not just on the result. They want to look at what have you done? What are you doing with things that are not working? It's like uh, being a manager. You don't just grade employee based on what the result is. You look at how the challenges were handled. And for government, that is important. So I don't know exactly what happened uh, but this refinery should work just like every other areas that will provide, will make it easy for things to be available to the people and therefore will help to decrease cost. Because right now, people are not seeing it. And as long as they don't see it, whatever you're doing, they will be casting it as nothing or negative. That is true everywhere in the world because People are impatient. And I think Nigerians, they may be right in being impatient. At the same time, I think that they need to be cautious in doing so. Tinubu administration needs to communicate. Communicate, communicate. That communication will not just be on the good, but also on the bad and what we are doing. And right now, I do not think they are communicating well. I think they can do more in letting people know where we are and why the holdups are and what we expect to get in the next few months. All right, and of course, let's also let Mr. you know... Mr. Jed, excuse me, help me tell uh, Dr. Udaja that Potakos refinery has not refined a liter of fuel. And as of four weeks ago, Kiari told us that in two weeks' time, the refinery will begin production. But they have not refined a liter of fuel. So there's nothing that like started working and they stopped. Right. They had not started working. Okay. Right. Let, let's leave that for the next okay. topic okay. right okay. now. And uh, let's go back to Shegun Shoumi, a former Gov Ogun State Governorship candidate for the People's Democratic Party, has said that Olushengo Basenjo, good luck, Jonathan, and a few other party founding fathers stand by as the party suffers. Shoumi expressed his expectation that the Basenjo and Jonathan would have intervened to end the party's protracted dispute before at uh, the last general elections in 2023. Recall that certain House of Representatives candidates running on the PDP platform presented the mandate that Omar Odamangum, the party's national chairman, steps down. Led by Ikena Ugo, 
Ikenga, I beg your pardon, Ugochir, the 60 lawmakers accused Damago of working for the ruling All Progressive Congress APC, questioning why the party leadership has stayed silent on the political crisis in River State, but would rather watch President Bola Tinubu of the APC to intervene. He attributed the cause of Damago's resignation and other crises within the party's leadership to the weak problem. Ashomi lamented that the PDP dealt with the problem of the former River State Governor Yeston Wiki before the last general elections and still grappled with some phenomenon one year after the election. He expressed sadness that the internal wrangling within the PDP has lingered beyond the 2023 presidential poll, adding that the founding fathers of the party should step in and reconcile worrying party men to consolidate the gains of the party. And it seems like Shomi has short memory because we remember prior to the elections in 2015, uh, Lucien Gobash, the former president, actually tore his, his party uh, card on camera. And good luck, Jonathan, running under the PDP, uh, lost the election because those in the PDP actually left and worked against him. Do you still expect those two? To still have a say or have interest in the party, talking about PDP, Dr. Joe Diaja taking a look at our president and things that have happened prior to Buhari ruling for eight years, and now uh, talking about uh, uh, Tinubu now being the president under the APC. Uh, taking a look at all that have happened, should this guy, should this man, I'm uh, talking about this ex-president, still have the interest of the party and still want the interest of the party uh, going forward into? more and of course next elections well pdp has lost um uh quite a number of elections in the last uh, few years so there's no doubt that they are in some disarray and part of their being on disarray i believe is that they still cling to the status quo that may not be serving them anymore so if they want to go back to the old um leaders there's nothing wrong with getting advice from the old um, leaders of uh, any party or any organization what they have to be careful though is allowing the status quo that these uh, older leaders built to continue to dominate the party in this period where there are some younger generation not only into the party but in other parties and these younger generations are seeing things differently and the party should listen to them and not only listen to them but actually welcome mm -hmm. them into key positions within the party so again they can go back to um obasanjo jonathan and so on but they need to be careful because things are changing very fast which i believe in totality is good for the company uh, for the country and so if they if they do that they will be in good shape um, very soon but if they allow the status quo to continue to dominate them by revolving around it well they may uh, have to not only battle apc but battle other parties that may be uh, now positioning themselves to be a play a bigger uh, force in the next election all right, let's go back to Mr. Peter Nosiki, uh, taking a look at what has happened in the past. Do you think that the lies of Lucian Gobas and John Goodluck Jonathan still has the political will to want to help the party regain its strength it used to have back then since 1999 until they lost the last election in 2015? Well, as you, as you said, uh, Abbas and John thought he said PDP membership card. And I don't think he has uh, um, gotten a new one since then, which means uh, he, he is no more a member of the political party of the PDP. And uh, 2015, 2019, 2023, he did not campaign for PDP and did not speak on behalf of uh, PDP. Jonathan in 20 in 2023 did not campaign for Atiku. So he too, and he is battling his own, um, he is romancing with the APC because Buhari seized a lot of his wife's uh, um, 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 properties. 
So he has to romance with, with the ruling party for those properties to be released. So that's why right now he is uh, one leg in PDP, one leg in APC. Understand? So PDP has to find another way of uh, solving uh, their problem. In 2015, the national chairman of PDP then, who was a former um, governor of Cardinal State, worked against the PDP. That's 2015. The national chairman of PDP, who was former governor of Kaduna State, betrayed the PDP. Understand? So they should uh, know how to remove uh, the chaffs from the grain. If not, what is happening now will continue to happen. So what's the way forward? Because now they look like some are calling for the, uh, talking about the leaders who are supposedly supposed to lead the party all from those problems. Or it seems like uh, they are not showing any interest. For me, they shouldn't count on, on, on Jonathan. They shouldn't count on, on, on Abbasanjo. Then, Dangwagu to me seems very weak. Because he had not shown a direction to the party. He had not shown any vision to the party. Those that worked against the party, Wike and his, uh, um, and his uh, other um, G5 governors, are still in the party. Ayofa Yoshe is still in the party. Understand? So, and you don't condone evil. You eliminate evil. So that's what I expect um, um, Damagu to do. That's why Ikenga um, Ugochinere and others are not comfortable with him. That's why they are saying that he must step aside. So they should, they should bring a, a committed person, a strong leader, that would uh, do what is needed in the party. All right, and of course, uh, taking a look at precedent, it shows that some in the PDP look like they are untouchable. They can do and undo and get away with it. Because, That's what because it looks like. they have uh, weak people at the end of the day. And let's not forget, Atiku actually left the party and came back and still took the presidential ticket to run for president in 2023. Atiku never left PDP. But when he decided to disassociate himself from Gulag Jinnita and decided not to support him, it looked like okay. he was on the side. Th that was uh, in 2015. 2015. Yeah. But 2019, he ran on the ground of PDP. He ran back in 2019. All right. And of course, it looks mm. like also one of the untouchables. Okay. Let's go over to the next on the agenda where it looks like one of the opposition party called the Accord Party has demanded that the federal government step up effort to stabilize commodity prices in the nation, arguing that commodity prices do not reflect the narrow strengthening relative to the U.S. dollar. All right, uh, taking a look at this matter for a fact, I know Mr. Peter Anosiki has this very interesting view about the U.S. dollar, but let's go back to Dr. Joe Diaja. Uh, another opposition party saying that, what's happening? The dollar looks like it's going down. Why should the prices of goods not also reflect what the U.S. dollar is telling us? Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Oladeye is uh, saying what um, we all know, that uh, U.S. dollar is going, um, is doing better against, sorry, Naira is doing better against dollar, but the impact have not uh, been felt. Uh, I like how he actually, I kind of like him actually. I like as opposition party, the way he presenting things that could be done are good. You know, rarely do you get that from opposition parties. They usually hide, quote, hide the ideas. He laid out a number of things that should be done to help. So I like him for that. Um, now, when you look at things he said, they all make sense in terms of looking at how the economy is affected by Naira situation in this case, monetary controls by government, and so on. Monetary control is one of the big ways that a country handles inflation. It happened here in the U.S. through um, the Treasury Department 
the raising interest rates and following it and so on until they felt that things had stabilized. However, as what is happening in Nigeria shows, and it happened here too, after you've done all those things, things may still be high. In fact, they just reported that gas here will increase next week and we are in spring, soon summer when people travel. That concerns people. So for Nigeria, things are still high because there is important part that he also mentioned, and that is what the businesses are doing. So he, he made a point that given some credit tax breaks to businesses, may well be good to the businesses, but not to the average people. And he made one recommendation, again, I like that, that these freebies they give to businesses should be tied to some outcome. The same thing happens here. I remember when Obama was running for second term and businesses got a lot of money from bank breakdown, yet they refused to invest. They were holding money and refused to invest, so much so that Obama many times called them, yelled at them, yet they did not do much. And people understood that. People understood what the businesses were, were doing. So I think for Nigeria, the government needs to continue what they are doing, but they need to also get down into, okay, we are doing all these things, and yet things are not doing well. They need to look at those businesses. If they are not playing their role, the government needs to be hard on them. And at the same time, they need to keep emphasizing local production, local production, and less use of foreign things, both by the government, the politicians, and by the people. So I, again, I like what the, the okay. leader of the Accord Party said. Okay. And I hope that the Tinubu administration will look at the number of things he mentioned and take them and sleep back again and take and leave what will help them to do things better. All right. Okay, let's go back to Mr. Peter Anos. He already know your view on the dollar as being artificial in terms of the way it's gaining against uh, uh, the dollar. But taking a look at the way things are going. And, uh, of course, according to uh, the Accord Party, uh, is saying that, that the consular tax holiday and rebates to some manufacturers are only reaching the hyper-rich industrialists with zero impact on the general populace. Mm. Well, no, the average businessman in Nigeria, they're mostly greedy. Even in spite, they want to triple and sometimes even quadruple their, their earnings when we know definitely the cost of manufacturing does not really reflect the prices which the end user actually gets to uh, buy those uh, goods. Why is it that so? Um, Jerry, that to start with, 99% of businesses in Nigeria fall under small businesses. Okay. Small businesses are those businesses that have uh, less than 400, 450 staff. Understand? So over 99% of businesses in Nigeria fall under small businesses. And uh, for business and uh, our our environment is not good for business because of because of high overhead. If you are in business and you cannot bring your cost of production below 30%, you can hardly make profit in that business. Hmm. So but now when you check the, the high cost of energy and electricity diesel, everything. Mm -hmm. That's why businesses are not surviving in Nigeria. And for them that to survive, they need the incentive from government. They need incentive uh, from, from government. Government will, should, will continue to encourage them, will continue to create an enabling environment. I'm sure when we talked about uh, price control, that is to kill businesses. Understand me? Government can now, an instance, cement is selling about 8,500 naira per bag. And I build my own house. And you now come and tell me what to rent it out. 
understand me? Why you did not subsidize uh, cement for me? You did not subsidize zinc for me? You did not subsidize paint for me? So for the farmers who go um, to their farm, buy their fertilizers, pay, pay everything, you now begin to detect price for them. They will begin to hoard those products. Which will create a problem and uh, understand me. Sure. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a fan of a price control board. You can only control what you have input on. All right. Understand? Okay. If a government can uh, provide incentives, understand, to business owners, they can now say because, because we contributed, you should sell at this price. But, but, but when you don't uh, make any contribution, you shouldn't be part of the price. All right, and of course, so that's uh, really the hammer on the head of the nail as far as that one is concerned. But I would not permit us to go on and on. I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Joe Udiaja, all the way from the United States of America, for joining us on Political Roundup this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Yeah, you too. All right, and of course, big thanks to Mr. Peter Anosiki for being a part of the show as usual. Thank you for having me. All right, it's been a pleasure. And of course, this is where we draw the curtain on Political Roundup. Join us same time tomorrow on our YouTube channel at Voice of the People TV. Also do well to follow us on all the social media platforms on at VOP TV Live. I am Jerry. Good evening.